So I recently found out after watching some Twitch videos and YouTube videos that the right way to do a movie review or review about anything, just talking in general, is to not address the camera or the audience. It's to play a video game and then just make small talk in the background. Like it's not really important. You're just kind of focused on the game and nothing else. With that in mind, I fired up the Nintendo Classic that I went to Target every day for six months to get um, because I hate myself. And I'm going to talk about uh, Terminator and Robocop, two movies I just watched while I play a, an assortment of Nintendo games really badly. I recently rewatched both movies because I'm going to do a feud against Robocop and Terminator, the timeless rivalry that's been going on since the 80s. I obviously have nostalgic, fond feelings of both, but I'm also a realistic person. I know that I have to keep my expectations in check. Things age, especially things from the 90s. But I was surprised with how well these films both held up. And most of that has to do with just fantastic writing and creativity. Robocop has this tongue-in-cheek vibe to everything, uh, especially against corporate greed. And you see this through the different commercials they have littered throughout the movie. Things like buying a sponsored heart from a company like Honda. Then there's the hilarious transitions where the newscasters go from these stupid commercials, like, I'd buy that for a dollar, to some horrific event going on in a third world country where tons of people died. Typically, these deaths are coming because corporations are testing uh, missiles and they're backfiring. Uh, that's another ongoing joke in the film is everything that these companies do to try to better the world is a complete and utter disaster because they're not properly tested um, and they end up taking a lot of lives, uh, like, like multiple presidents uh, off camera. And it's hilarious because... The, the, the big suits, the big wigs don't give a shit. They're all about the bottom line. They're all about making money. But when you do that, you lessen some of the stakes and some of the impact, some of the emotional weight to things. For instance, later on, there's a scene where Robocop fights that, what, what's that mech called? That giant mech. I always forget the name. I could look it up, but I'm not going to because I'm focused on a video game right now. But that giant mech, he fights, and the way he beats it is because the thing's so poorly constructed, it just falls down a flight of stairs, and that's pretty much it. He sees him later on, but it's such a kind of lame little thing where he just shoots a rocket at him, so there's, there's nothing to it. Terminator plays things very serious, and that can be a fault of its own, too, because the technology just isn't quite there in 1984 to make everything realistic and not come off as kind of cheesy and campy at times. For the most part, it works really well. Um, it's believable. Up until the final act, really, when you see the full skeleton framework of the uh, Terminator, <laughs> that's when things just get a little silly. It's like, okay, this thing can barely fucking move. It's like slowly hunting our characters who could easily avoid it if they just walked out of the room, but yet it still somehow catches up with them. This is overlooked, of course, because of the technology difficulties they had then, I mean, but it still takes you out of the picture for sure. Most of my time watching Terminator, all I kept thinking is, man, I'm really excited to watch T2, which in my mind is far superior than the first. Although Arnold as the villain is a badass and he certainly is scary. Even after all these years and kind of how Arnold's become a character of himself, he's still a force to be reckoned with here. And the same can be said for Linda Hamilton. Every time I'm watching Linda Hamilton on screen, all I'm thinking is she becomes such a badass in the sequel. I don't even give a shit about her here but it is fun to see her grow and where she started at and where she eventually will get to in the second film and then in the third when she's killed off camera and dies of leukemia. Fuck you, writers. What a shitty send-off to one of the most iconic female leads. Terminator's got a lot of great cameos too, like Bill Paxton and that dude from Gremlins. I forgot his name. He's always a nice treat though. And Robocop is one of those movies where the hero is the least interesting thing to me. Peter Weller's great, and I like that he has to kind of piece together what happened to him in the past, how he became this super soldier. But Kurtwood Smith as Clarence J. Bodeker is amazing. The dude is over the top as hell in the best way possible. And every time you think Alex J. Murphy's going to get his revenge, Bodeker finds a way to get away. And you just can't wait for him to eat the fucking dust. Eventually he does, in, in a very nice fashion. Both are spectacular R-rated films, which is not a shock for the 80s and 90s. Uh, they thrived on R-rated films. It's nice to see those finally come back, and um, Hollywood not be such pussies when it comes to making badass movies with blood and gore and swearing again. Some of my favorite movies to date are all about those things. It's hard to say which movie holds up better in terms of special effects. I think Robocop gets more of a pass because it is supposed to be cheesy, where Terminator is really trying to be that dark, gritty, realistic film, 
And there's just moments where, like during the futuristic war segments, things just come off a little hokey. Granted, you throw a 70% dark filter over the top of both of them, you got yourself a Zack Snyder film from 2017. Maybe that's all they need to do. When they inevitably release them on 4K Blu-ray again, just put them dark as fuck. Just dark. Put a layer of grime over it. I enjoyed my time with both movies. I started watching Terminator 2 again, which is just far superior in every way. I can't wait to finish that. I think I'll probably stop there for the Terminator franchise. 3 is... I mean, it's stupid. It's, it's, it's pretty dumb. It's like X-Men 3. It's watchable, but you really kind of hate everything that you're watching. And the RoboCop sequels are just fucking atrocious. I refuse. I refuse to watch them. And there's like 20 of them, I swear. There's a lot of straight-to-DVD ones, if I recall. All different actors, I think. Grade-wise, I think looking back now, you know, if I would have rated them originally, they were probably both 10s. But I didn't rate them originally, so I have the luxury of, of saying my, my piece now that they're older. And I still think they're very entertaining. They're definitely dated, but I can look past it. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 8.5 for Terminator, and I'm gonna go, uh, I think 8 for Robocop. I enjoyed myself with Terminator just a bit more. I really like the world they set up. I like futuristic time travel things, even when it doesn't make that much sense. And I, I couldn't wait to, to watch the second one, so that's where I'm at. Let me know your thoughts on Terminator and Robocop, and look for that movie feud um, in the coming days or the week. Thanks for watching.